Well, in March, Honey Bun revealed their decision to expand their manufacturing facilities with a $1 billion investment. Big things. We get a taste of what the future holds for the baking company in tonight's discussion with Honey Bun CEO, Michelle Chong. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Kalila. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here with you. It is so good to see you. The last time I saw you was in person. We spoke on Money Moves. That right. was probably like two years ago. And it's probably now about that. Now your first time here on Taking Stock and to discuss yes. some pretty good news as well. <laughs> That's right. Exciting. All right. But for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I'm Michelle Chong and I'm the CEO of Honey Bun. I, Honey Bun is 41 years old, 42 wow. years old, 42 years old. And, you know, I've been the CEO at Honey Bun for the 42 years, old, years now. So it's been a while. Honey Bun is also a family business. I have, my husband is the, my co-founder. So we work together in the business and I have, two of my children in the business, Daniel, who is my oldest son, he's also the deputy CEO. So he's a part of a succession plan. He's been on the board of directors now for a while. And Dustin is my other son, who is the chief sales and marketing officer. So we have um, a growing company. We started in 1982 with 12 staff. And now we have almost... We have 500, over 500 staff now. So we've grown a lot. We've had many expansions during our time in business. And our last expansion was in 2018 when we added about um, 10,000 square foot of production space. But guess what? The space is all used up. And wow. Daniel needs to automate as I hand over. He, he needs to automate more to get more capacity and better quality and just keep with the time. So that's the plan. So when you say automate, because the big talk now is AI and of course robotics as well, working in tandem with AI, what's the plan for automation for Honeybone? Like how much of your facility is automated now and where do you want to get to? So you would call our bakery facility or semi-automated because some processes are automatic because you put the bread on the line and the bread goes around and it gets wrapped and it gets packed and some of them are some of the processes are more manual where you take the pieces up off the line or off of a machine that forms them and you put them in the pans so to automate a bakery it is a lot of footprint that you need you know, big computers are small. So if you have a technology company and you want to expand, it's much easier. But when you want to expand and bring in an oven, you're going to need a lot of space. So we have been upgrading our capacity over the couple of years. But, you know, <laughs> it's amazing how space can go. So mm -hmm. we're semi-automated and we want to automate the lines as much as we can in the space that we are, are getting. Well, you know, there are a lot of people who, when they say automation, for them it's a bad word because they feel like you are you know, replacing humans on the job, like you're not having as many people working because machines are replacing our jobs. Like, how do you see it? So how I see it is that once your business is growing, you need people. So it may not be in the production facility. It might be in another area of the business, for example, sales. So you may cut back on one area and increase on another area. But once a business is growing, you always have a demand for labor. And the important thing is that we keep meeting the needs of our customers. And if our customer needs more standardized products, then you give the customer what they want and you continue to develop your staff so that they can take on new roles, manage equipment, bigger equipment, improve food safety. So it's a, 
you you just it's it's an all it's an ongoing process of improvement in other words right so i see a comment here that made me chuckle <coughs> he said the easter bonham sell off on my ends right now i have two left out of the five that i bought <laughs> like you're that. lucky a lot of people say they couldn't help it they had to eat off a whole bun during easter <laughs> <laughs> and we have another comment saying congrats on the expansion love this for the jamaican economy so let's talk about some of your numbers before we come to the expansion for your first quarter, which ended December 31, you have a 15% increase in revenues. You're going from 817 million now to 941 million. So you're almost a billion dollar company and almost. your net profits are almost <laughs> are also up 25%. So talk to us about what you've been doing to get this increase. So it's a few very obvious things. One of them is focusing a lot on production efficiencies. Like I said, we have been investing in equipment even this year. So, you know, if you can increase your efficiency by a percent, it means that you can get a lot more on the bottom line because at a $3 billion sale, if you can get 1%, that's a lot. So that's one big one that we're continually focusing on. The other one is distribution. How do you get your product into markets that they weren't in before? How do you also distribute more efficiently and let it cost you less? So that's very important. So that's what our sales and marketing manager focuses on. How can he distribute more almost for the same cost? So he, he has a lot of plans in place. He has a lot of strategy. So, um, you know, efficiency is an amazing thing. You can save a lot of money through that. So that's that's what's been happening, why the sales are going up 15 and the profits are going up 25. Mm -hmm. How much are you exporting right now? I, I won't give you the percentage, Kalila, but I'll tell you that it's not it's not a whole lot. And part of that reason is because of the capacity that we constraints that we have, even with space and equipment. So this is one of the main purposes that we're expanding our facility to be able to export more because we do have export markets, but we can't work them the way we would like to. We have to almost not share the secret. We have to manage the communication with our distributors. But once we have the facility and we have the capacity, it will be one of our main goals to export more. So we're currently in some good stores in the UK. We're at Asda and Tesco. And we're also in Canada in the Loblaw chain. And we're also in the US, but um, more to the smaller grocers, not as many chain stores there. So we need to export more and we have new products waiting for the space so that we can export more as well. I thought you would have been in markets closer to home, CARICOM markets, for example, and diaspora mm -hmm. markets in Jamaica, because even though you're a Jamaican company, your products aren't necessarily niche products. Uh, cinnamon rolls and uh, honey buns and donuts and those things, those are universal. Yes. So we are in a lot of the Caribbean islands. We do export to them, but they're not the quantities that we see in the UK and Canada. We will be shipping a container of products to the UK or Canada, whereas the Caribbean will be taking 10, 15 cases of a product. It's not a, it's not high volume. So mm, that's a problem. Why is that? Well, they're smaller markets. That's for one. And I think many of the Caribbean islands don't have direct flights. So some of them you have to go to Miami with the product and then mm. to the island. So the shelf life of the product does not like Miami and then to another island. So those direct flights, have they are where we see more interest in, in sales. Mm, that would be a challenge indeed, making sure that the product is still fresh when somebody purchases. But you're all the way in the UK. Like, how long does it take for 
for the product. Yes. Really Those cool products cake. are Easter buns. They, they last longer. Oh. They have a good shelf life. And our rum cakes as well have a good long shelf life. So once we get our capacity up and going, we can certainly look at marketing more to the islands and to other other places in the U.S. Mm. Is the is the Easter bun a newer product? Because I don't really typically associate honey bun with Easter bun. Right. Well, we have Easter buns at Easter time in the UK when they buy from us. It is. You've labeled. always had it though. I know I oh, saw it on the shelves this days. year, but I can't recall seeing it. You before. know why? Because we service the export market primarily over even our local markets because the UK take that product all year round. They label it as a spice bun. They don't call it Easter bun. It's a spice bun. But there are regular customers throughout the year. So at Easter time now, when we have a local demand, we can't cut our we can't cut our regular customer in the UK because they also have increased demand. So at Easter time, it's a tough thing because you have to continue to service your export customers as you did before, and they also want more. So unfortunately we don't have as much for the local market. Mm, I see, I see. So I have a question here from Andrew. Andrew wants to know, does honey bun use local ingredients? Yeah, so as much as we can, we use local ingredients. The only ingredients that we import are those very minute ingredients that add quality to our product that are very specialized. And so those are not in volume. And wherever we can, we always buy local product um, ingredients. Okay. I mentioned earlier that you are almost a billion dollar company. You're at nine something in revenue. Is that a number that you are keeping your eye on for when you cross that billion dollar mark? Like, is that a significant milestone that you're watching? Yes, but we're not expecting that it's going to take that much because we have a lot of market that we are we can service quite easily once we get our new facility. But we keep our numbers on the on the sales all the time. Very important. I'm and looking to up. Reach that will be a, a, a significant accomplishment for us. Wow. Invite me to the party. <laughs> Make sure you invite me to the party when you reach the, the billion. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we've been talking as well about the expansion product uh, project. Tell us more about what that's going to entail, this billion dollar investment. So we've got a beautiful facility out by Angel, in, in Angel's area. And... Um, the building is there already, so we just have to retrofit it for a bakery. So it's not like we're starting from scratch. We just have to put in the specialized floors. You know, we're food. We're very big on food safety, so it's going to take quite a bit for us to make sure all the food safety um, features are in, and the electrics, the flooring. Flooring is a very difficult thing. The facilities, the staff facilities, etc. And then we're going to have to, we're already purchasing equipment to put in the new facility. And we will move over some of our existing equipment that are in, you know, in good condition. But we'll be moving over the, some equipment and buying some new equipment. But the longest, the longest time will be really just retrofitting that building, which is practically new. So... We're very excited about it. So is it just a factory space or will there be an outlet as well, similar to the Retirement Crescent location? We're not starting with an outlet because there are lots of controls around, you know, who enters the premises and that sort of thing. So where we are at retirement, we found a way to put an outlet right at our front gate. So we don't have to have um, customers coming into the bakery. So we will find a way to eventually make products available at that facility as well, but that's not our primary objective. So what's the timeline for this to be up and running? Uh, between seven and 10 months. So before the end of the year. 
Okay, looking forward to that. It is a, a massive expansion project. Like we said, a billion dollars. It's set to more than double your manufacturing capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our viewers like to hear the numbers, like to talk about the money. How is Honeybun financing this? Are you able to share? Well, if you notice from our balance sheet, we have a very strong balance sheet. So we have a lot of cash to put in and we will also, um, be, be, we have already, so we're already sourcing a loan. So it will be cash and a loan. Okay. And can you say in what proportion? Maybe 50-50, maybe. <laughs> so it's, they're almost equal. But when we get down to the fine print to sign up on it, we'll decide how to structure how to structure the financing. Y'all got money. That's a great <laughs> position to be in. You got money to reinvest. I love yeah. that. So with all this money being spent on the new facility, should the public be looking towards price increases in goods to make up for that spend or you, you got it like that? No, we're not going to be using price increase to finance the debt, so to speak. What we do is we make our products really good so that customers will buy it. So price increases really are looked at when we have input increases. And even when input increases, we normally try to find ways to increase, improve efficiency, which we have done. We've become so good at it. But you know, price increase is a matter of your ingredients in, input. If those go up, then possibly yes. So but well, what's that been like? Finance. What's that been like for honey bun? Because I feel like all of us have been hit by inflation in the past year, in the past couple of years, actually. How mm -hmm. has that impacted my honey bun? Um we are very careful how we make price increases we do a lot of competitive studies and we do a lot of costings we have good software good erp softwares that do costings for us but if we see that our margins are increasing because of our efficiency we give the customers a buy. we don't increase it because we share that um, benefit with our customers so looking at, I see in the chat, people are asking about products. I see one particular, Andrew again, Andrew asking any local cocoa and coconut products. Is that cocoa or coca, you said? And cocoa. coconut products coming soon? Yeah, coconut, I was just saying to someone who visited with the factory, it's very unfortunate that we don't have a local person who processes all the coconut that we have to make desiccated coconut for production. You know, we can't really process coconuts in the way we need to use it. Um, and cocoa, we use both local and imported cocoa because the, the um, prices, if we can import it cheaper, then it's something that we will look at for our customers to keep prices down. Mm hmm but we uh, do get local coconut, but, you know, we have to match the prices with what we're importing it at. And coconut, I'm calling out there. If anybody wants to find, if we can find a, a local supply of coconut to get us desiccated so coconut, we will use a lot of it. Okay. You ha you guys hear that? Anybody into coconut farming? Uh, Michelle Chung wants to do business with you. So mm -hmm. with the expanded capacity, manufacturing capacity, are there going to be any new products uh, coming up? Give yes, we have a few new products that we have to be keeping under the hat. Oh, we can't. We can't, <laughs> we can't bring them out because we can't produce them in the factory that we have. So there will be new products. How soon? After the factory is open? Yes, maybe a couple months afterwards, as soon as that, because we've had them developed already. Well, I'm excited to hear what those products are. Everybody say in the chat saying that your cinnamon roll is the best. One yeah. big Arab family says, just saying, if it's not a honey bun cinnamon roll, I don't want it. Microwave for 20 seconds with cheese. <laughs> mm. And try it with cream cheese. It's amazing with cream cheese. Cream so, cheese. you know, mm. last year we launched our cinnamon um, bread, which is... Uh, 
a loaf bread with cinnamon filling in them rolled into it and it was it is so popular but we just cannot meet the demand so we just have to be able to make sure that everybody's getting that product it's amazing you use that cinnamon loaf and you put it in egg and you make a french bread with it it's outstanding nice so you'll soon get enough of them soon I, love get a good, I love a good cinnamon bread i have ryan here saying pity the loan was not coming in the form of a bond um is a bond something because you said you haven't really fully decided the haven't finalized the, the structure yes so, so thank you ryan. Bond. yeah that's possible okay good Next question comes from Javon, who's thinking about your, your planning. He wants to know, with the new deputy CEO being appointed, does this mean you'll be retiring soon or take on a different role in the company? Okay, so Javon, thanks for that opportunity to answer. I've already taken on another role. I'm still very much available to the deputy CEO, and he manages most of the operations of the business. And, you know, being a young engineer, he has a lot of talent that I grew up in business without, most of them being engineering. But my new role has been founder of the Honeybun Foundation. And that's where I'm really passionate about giving back and helping smaller businesses to develop models for businesses to make them grow and to do business better. The Honeybun Foundation is not into doing helping one one cocoa fill basket. We want to just help by putting out business models for companies, small companies and medium companies, so they can do well in business. Because when everybody does well in business, there's more people to buy our product. And our focus is always about how to get companies to export more, earn more for Jamaica, add to the GDP and the bottom line, so that's what I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And we've already had th this year's our third set of companies that we provide advisors for these companies. And uh, they're on a one year program and we support and handhold them. So we're doing a lot of things at the foundation and that's my outgoing role. Outgoing. Interesting. Steve says, love what you're doing with MSMEs. Uh, just remind the people how they can participate in that program with the Honeybun Foundation. You have your app, right? It's the Gap app. We have our Gap app, which we spoke about before, Kalila. But um, our programs are on thehoneybunfoundation.com. On the website, use the word thehoneybunfoundation.com. And you can see more about the work that we're doing. Okay. And let me just piggyback on something that you mentioned earlier. You said your role in the foundation is your outgoing role. You have been CEO for 42 years, which is a long time. Yes. Uh, do you have a, a timeline on your exit? You're looking to just... To no, because it will be very gradual. I'm available. I mean, I'm available. I'm there for my children and I'm there for the management team. We're developing our management team. They just finished a program with Red Belt with Marcia Wunchoy because we're developing stronger leaders in the company because the company is growing. So we're going to need it. And uh, I'll be there. I'll be in an office beside them. So whenever they need information or opinions, I'm not, I'm, I'm still there. And that's the best way, I think, to really hand over to the next set of to the next generation or to the next set of managers you're there still you know it's not like you wait until you die and then they can't find you to get any <laughs> advice <laughs> yeah i hear that it's there so philip wants to know why debt and not equity um philip i think that equity is an option for us but i think if it goes equity, then it would be something where the partner is very strategic. It has to be a strategic partner. So it's a discussion that we have and we're having, but it's going to have to be a good fit and good for the company. It's a very diplomatic answer, <laughs> which I would expect. So your company, we recently heard, I think it was in What's Hot just now, the last company is moving to the main market. How close will this expansion put Honeybun towards migrating to the main market as well? Well, it will probably put us very close. It's something that we have to start discussing now. 
So as soon as we get over this hurdle with the expansion, it's something that we'll have to discuss. Okay. What about dividends? The people want to know. Stephen says, do you intend to pay regular dividends? And how will the project affect dividend payments? So we don't have any plans to change our dividend policy. From when we went public, we've paid dividends. In, in fact, we've paid more and more as a percentage of income over the period that we have gone public, and we don't intend to stop. So no changes there. How often do you pay dividends? Once a twice a year. Twice, a, twice year. a year. Not bad. Not bad. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Any other plans that you'd like to share with us before you leave? Um well, I think if I started to talk, I would probably end up talking about the foundation. <laughs> and I know this is a honeybun interview. I just want to remind our customers or shareholders that Honeybun is very firmly rooted in international standards for food safety. That's important because once you open your mouth to put food in your mouth, you have to say to yourself, do I know how it was prepared? Honeybun's workers are all internationally trained on food safety. So, you know, I could say to my workers, you could go and work in Switzerland because you have all the food safety training that you need. This is important for us and it's important for customers. They're eating things because it's nice and it is nice, but you're also eating the safest food in Jamaica. So that's important as well. Okay. Thank you very much, Michelle. Looking forward to all the new things to come from Honeybun and your international expansion.